Vad är det? Hi Venu. Uh, Hi. So, so we have the participants as well on YouTube. Uh, so oh, okay. Are we live now? Yeah, we are. Hi Aditya. Hi Aditya. Oh, okay. I can hear a feedback. Uh, I think uh, you. Okay, I'll just check. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Uh, Hi. So we have the party. Uh, Venu, is the feedback gone now? Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Uh, can't hear it now. Generally, you know why it happens is if it's streaming on YouTube, right? So it comes back. Uh, no, <coughs> what uh, basically happened was I was uh, you know keeping YouTube and Zoom both of them live on. Correct. My... Correct. That's what. That's what exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, you want me to start my video now? Or when when should we start? It's still time, right? Fifteen minutes are there. Hello. Yes, Venu. Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was saying uh, we still have time, right, for the start? Yes, yes. We will start sharp at oh. seven. Okay, but it's already live on YouTube, you're saying? Yes, we are. Okay. All right. Cool. So I can turn on my camera then afterwards, right? When yeah, yeah. Around seven twenty-five ish. Okay, so should I join after five five minutes now? Then I'll just leave the thing and come back. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Okay, thanks. Bye. Guys, I hope it's not echoing now. Okay, great.
Hey guys, can you see me and hear me? Can, uh, I can hear you and see you as well. Uh, we'll... All right. Yeah. Uh, so I need to share my screen, right? Yeah, I'll just stop sharing. Okay. One second, I'll put it in full screen. Is it visible? Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, when we can see your screen as well. All right, perfect. Okay, so we still have five minutes to go, right? Yeah, we'll start All right. at seven thirty. All right. All right.
Hi guys, good evening. Uh, a very very good evening to all of you. Uh, we have received a very very huge turnout for this particular webinar. All thanks to Venu and the topic basically sports analytics and technology. Uh, we see a lot of enthusiasts like you, you know, who want to make a career in this field, and Venu is here to help you guys out. So, talking about uh, to anyone you know who is coming to Mad About Sports platform for the first time, we introduce ourselves as a platform which helps sports buffs like yourselves to make a career in the field. We provide short-term courses, webinars like these, short-term courses in the field of sports management, be it sports analytics, sports technology, sports marketing, sports event management. So we have a lot of such courses with experts like Venu. So this is about us now talking about uh, Venu, like uh, talking about today's webinar. It's on sports analytics and technology, and Venu will be covering it. So giving a very short introduction about Venu. Uh, he is a, a person who needs not much introduction, to be honest, in the sports industry in India. He is a sports marketing and analytics consultant. Uh, presently, he is working with Fanisco as a, a digital fan engagement uh, strategist. And also, you know, he has worked as a performance analyst uh, previously uh, and also as an analyst with a lot of companies, organizations and teams like Catapult, Huddle, Bharat FC, Maharashtra P Premier League. So this is about Venu. Uh, so I'll uh, give the mic over to him. Venu, you can start the uh, webinar now. Thank you, Aditya. That was quite a generous introduction. Um, so whoever is watching on YouTube, uh, thank you guys. Uh, you know, thanks for uh, coming in and taking out the time today. Um, and thanks, Aditya and Mad About Sports for the opportunity. Um, you know, it's uh, it's quite uh, quite an honor to be here and uh, you know be called as an expert. Although you know, I'm still learning the tricks of the trade, and this industry, as you all know, is a booming one. Uh, sports has definitely come a long way uh, in terms of technology and analytics being used in it. Uh, it's it's quite a competitive uh, you know playing field now, and it's not like how it used to be, say, 20 years back when you know we guys were growing up. It was more of recreation. But now I think, you know, sports has completely taken off to another level with uh, with so many leagues coming up, with so much of professionalism coming in. And, you know, the technology scope is kind of increasing and broadening every day. And so that's that's something which I'm going to talk about today using my experience uh, and, you know, how I ventured into this field and, uh, you know, just share my story so that, you know, it, uh, you know, you guys can also have an idea in terms of if you want to nav navigate into this uh, profession, you know, what all steps you could take and you know, what's the high level things that you need to know. Um, so basically, uh, you know, since it's a very short uh, webinar today, so it's difficult to cover everything in detail. But what I'll try to do is just give you a high level overview of what this industry is all about. And you know, how you could look at making sports or sports technology or sports analytics a career for yourself. And that's something which a lot of people ask me every day, you know, on LinkedIn or, you know, even whenever, whenever I meet some students, when I'm doing some lecture at Symbiosis or, you know, or GISB and other institutions. So, so that's something which is a very relevant question. And uh, it's, it, it doesn't have a one straight answer, but, you know, I'll try and answer it to you through this webinar. So that's the whole idea. All right. I think we are good to go. So, yeah, let's start off. As you can see, uh, the table of contents for today, um, we will be looking at, uh, you know, broadly the sports technology scope. Uh, we'll be looking at who are the st stakeholders who are concerned with sports technology. Uh, a bit of an Indian market overview, so, uh, since, you know, we, I realized that, you know, we have a lot of uh, participants joining us from India. So, you know, I'll be kind of covering that in detail. And then a bit of uh, <clears throat> overview of performance analysis in sport, uh, you know, in terms of what is performance analysis, what all does it entail, uh, you know, uh, what does a coach think, what does an analyst do, you know, everything that is concerned with performance analysis. Uh, digging a little deep after performance analysis, we'll be touching a bit about athlete tracking. So I've worked with, a, a, you know, a famous company called Catapult Sports, which is into uh, GPS-based athlete tracking solutions. And I think that was quite a, a, you know, big experience for me to kind of, you know, learn the tricks of the trade because uh, I'm no strength and conditioning expert or, uh, you know, or a fitness coach. But then, you know, that experience taught me a lot about how athletes, uh, you know, could use technology to kind of uh, look at injury management, look at, you know, strength and conditioning, look at giving their best on the pitch, both on uh, the, you know, on the field of play, but during the training games, as well as you, uh, during training, as well as during the games. 
And uh, in my current role at Fanesco, I'm doing a bit of digital fan engagement. And I think that's something which I'll be covering because that is something which is the need of the R. And I believe that that's uh, you know, a topic uh, and tech in this space is actually going to be uh, you know, a big boom in the next uh, coming two to three years. You know, with COVID happening the past uh, you know, year and 2020 being the way it was, you know, it has actually changed a lot of things in this arena. And uh, digital fan engagement is kind of booming like anything in the market right now. And of course, in the end, we'll just briefly touch about what are the benefits of using technology in sports. So when it comes to scope, <clears throat> these are some of the uh, areas that we are covering today. The star marked ones are the ones which we'll be touching upon. We can't cover everything, but we'll try and focus on the top three, which is performance analysis or sports analytics, athlete tracking uh, using wearable devices, as well as uh, digital fan engagement solutions. Okay, so what you see on the screen right now is basically a word cloud uh, you know, in the center. and around it is basically all the stakeholders that are involved you know, in the areas of sports and technology. So I think this is important to understand in terms of when we talk about technology, when we talk about analytics, you know, who all are concerned or involved in sports analytics and sports technology. That is the most important aspect. Uh, you know, first of all, it's broadcasters, teams, players, analysts, you know, research institutions and universities. Everybody is concerned with sports technology and analytics because nowadays, if you see, you know, like I mentioned before, sports has become so professional. Everybody wants some data around what's happening in sport, you know, in their own uh, games, you know, with their athletes and stuff. So, you know, everybody wants that kind of an overview and the 360 degree feedback system. So we have performance analysis, we have strength and conditioning, we have injury prevention. So these are the three basic pillars of professional sport. Technology is also being used around in education, uh, in fan engagement, and also in research labs. So, you know, I spoke about uh, Catapult, you know, uh, the, uh, the company which does uh, GPS tracking. But where, you know, what, uh, what also happens is, you know, and in the back end, there's a lot of research which goes around in terms of making these technologies. So I think that's something which is important to understand, uh, right? If you have any questions, guys, uh, please keep posting on the YouTube uh, feed. And I think, uh, you know, uh, Aditya or somebody from Mad About Sports will post it on the Zoom chat window here. So please feel free to, you know, pitch in yes, whenever you want we to. We already have a yeah. lot of questions. I'll keep posting them. And Shivan, sure. I'll keep posting them uh, as soon as we get to them. All right. That will be great. Thanks, Aditya. Okay. I'll just check the chat window every now and then so that I'll just make sure there's no questions unanswered. All right. Thanks, Aditya. Cool. <clears throat> so, yeah, I spoke about India as a market for sports technology. I think I'll briefly touch upon that for the time being. So why are we looking at India as a big market now? Obviously, you know, our population is one of the reasons, uh, you know, there's so much of scope for expansion of sport. And, you know, what has happened now, you know, it's become an emerging market with a lot of maturity, uh, which is growing around technology awareness. And, you know, there's a lot of acceptance of technologies now. If you see, when I started off my career and I started off in India, currently I'm in Canada. But uh, when I started off my, uh, you know, stint in sports technology, it was somewhere around 2010, 2011. And that time it was a very, very amateurish market or, you know, an upcoming market, if I could say so that way. So not many people had an idea in terms of what kind of technologies exist. And, you know, how do we use it? So that was the phase that I actually started venturing into the industry. And now if you see, there's so much of leagues which has coming, you know, the IPL, the ISL, Hockey India League, you know, I-League, Tennis Leagues and Pro Kabaddi Leagues. In fact, Kabaddi has become such a big sport. So, you know, that's so heartening to see, it. you know, the sport which was a very, very specific, specialized sport for, you know, the uh, Indian village audience, you know, which we used to play in the streets and stuff. It's now become on the big stage thanks to Star Sports and thanks to a lot of marketing that has happened around it. So, you know, it's so heartening to see, you know, different sports coming up in the form of these professional leagues. Uh, the next point is actually very, very important. Uh, the foreign coaches influence, uh, not to demean our Indian coaches by any, any means, but it's just that, you know, uh, technologies were being used, uh, you know, say in countries like Australia and UK and US, uh, uh, you know, during the time when I was trying to venture into this uh, sports market. And, you know, so those coaches were hired to come and participate or, you know, coach uh, teams in the IPL, in the ISL and all these leagues. So they had a complete know-how of what technology is being used elsewhere. And, you know, and then they brought the same technologies to the Indian market as well, which was quite a big achievement because, you know, I thought that, you know, we were 
we were kind of there and there about but you know using when we started using these technologies you know we started getting a lot of attention and we got started getting a lot of influence by these technologies as well and i think the most important element is we are living in the world of ai so there's a lot of automated reporting happening and less human intervention so i think that is the most uh, heartening part of technology in sport wherein you know uh, it's it's kind of reducing the donkey work that people do or analysts do typically so i think that's something which is quite uh, quite impressive so yeah in a nutshell if i could say so uh, you know technology in sports are the future and it's here to stay so i think that's pretty much about where we are at the moment and i think we are living in exciting times so it's it's quite interesting the way the world is you know the world of sport has kind of developed and moving forward so it's yeah it's an interesting world that we are in i'll just quickly check the chat window once again in case if there's any questions all right nothing yet cool <clears throat> all right so uh, so the first topic for today is performance analysis guys which is the video uh, use of video and statistical analysis in sport so, sorry to interrupt yep. uh, so there were mm -hmm. a couple of questions but it were it sure. was most career related so i think okay. you, uh, you i think you will be covering it in the slides so that yes yes that's correct that's right yeah yeah all right so guys uh, career related questions i'll be coming up uh, towards the end and you know i'll be covering a bit of that uh, in the slides as well in terms of you know who can become an analyst you know how can you enter the industry and stuff cool thanks aditya all right so uh, when you when you when it comes to performance analysis i think uh, like we mentioned before there are various stakeholders in performance analysis in sports so who are the stakeholders who are involved or you know who are concerned with performance analysis so i think the first and foremost is a no brainer which is the coach i think the coach dictates uh, you know what he or she wants you know from the players from the analytics and you know what they want to see you know at the end of the game so it could be if it's a cricket match it could be as simple as looking at uh, you know uh, your wagon wheels or your pitch maps for specific bowlers it could be contest within a contest for example uh, you know it could be uh, say a batsman versus bowler now we have india versus england coming up so it could be say uh, ravi ashwin versus uh, virat uh, sorry virat versus uh, joe root and you know it could be virat kohli versus james anderson so you know so those are the things which are kind of interesting for the coaches to understand you know contest versus uh, within a contest versus uh, you know looking at the overall team performance and the overall player performances so the coach is the main stakeholder or the main man or the woman uh, you know or, or the you know person who is associated with performance analysis second is players i think uh, every player is uh, wanting feedback you know they want to understand where they are going right or wrong and you know how do they improve and i think that's the most important aspect of performance analysis that you know it's always about you know not finding your mistake but always looking to improve you know how you can do things differently and that's the most important aspect of performance analysis franchise owners and management uh, again a no brainer uh, it's uh, you know sports like i mentioned is quite professional now and uh, you know the leagues uh, have become a proper business you know it's not just recreation anymore so the league owners or the franchise owners you know they want a complete update or uh, you know they want a complete report on you know what their players are doing you know whom to buy you know whom to not buy which is also covered in the next point which is scouting agencies because you know scouts uh, you know player scouting agencies they kind of give that information to the franchise owners and management in terms of who's performing who's not performing who's the player to look out for watch out for you know those are those are the kind of things which are involved and of course broadcasters because you know we as common fans when are when we are watching uh, sport on television you could see that you know broadcasters use so much of technology to kind of bring a lot of rich content to uh, people who are watching sport so i think that's the important aspect of looking at the overall uh, stakeholders who are involved in performance analysis in sport i think i see a few questions or comments okay stephanie from uk how do you think foreign coaching analysis have impacted on to how you improve and do you think you're getting the same level as other countries uh so it's interesting stephanie uh, again uh, you know when i when i mentioned about foreign coaches it was more about the technology uh, you know part of it but you know again when it comes to uh, the analysis part of it it's pretty individualistic you know it's not about you know something that is being done elsewhere would work here right so i think that was a very important learning that i understood you know the way 
uh, I mean, if I could take, uh, say, an example of cricket, right? Uh, the way we analyze a game of cricket, in, you know, which is played in India, will be way different than how it is analyzed, say, you know, it is uh, in, in in UK or in Australia, because you know, obviously, playing conditions are different, standards are different, you know, the teams are different, and uh, how uh, how a sport is played in a particular country is different. So, you know, strategically, there are different things which are there to be analyzed. But yes, they, I mean, the foreign coaches did have an impact on me in terms of. Uh, you know, how they look at things, so obviously, uh, how I used to, uh, you know, overall look at it is using the best of both worlds, you know, using my gut feel and knowledge, as well as my understanding of analytics, and using the best of what they bring to the table as well. So, you know, it was a combination of the two, if I, if I answered it correctly. Uh, do sports other than cricket have a good amount of structured data? Yes, they definitely have. Uh, I think, uh, you know, that's uh, cricket, obviously, it's it's a very stats driven sport, you know, there's a lot of statistics that can be derived, but you know, uh, football as well, you know, there are more than 300,000 data points which can be derived in a football game of 90 minutes. So all sports have some kind of structured data which can be analyzed and derived. Uh, it's all about understanding what the coach wants, what the team wants and how you as you as an analyst, how you can make a difference. How do you get the data set of a cricket match and how to extract? I think uh, that's a very uh, software uh, oriented question if i may put it that way uh, again you know it, there are multiple softwares which come which the analysts use and you know they do a ball by ball entry of data into the system and then you know you kind of you kind of get a lot of data that you can you know, extract from uh, what's the pathway to become a sports or cricket analyst i'll come to that one thank you uh, that is a career oriented question i'll just come to that one soon all right, thank you guys. Thanks for the questions. Uh, keep them coming. So, if I look at performance analysis in sports, and again, this is my overall definition of how performance analysis can be looked at. Uh, I'll just break it down into simple components, and I'll not give a very, uh, you know, bookish definition. You know, in simple terms, it's actually a journey from gathering data to filtering out information. Okay, so now here's my question to the audience, and I think then maybe you can just, uh, you know, see, look out for the comments. So. If you could say, uh, if you could just tell me, you know, from the audience side, what is the difference between data and information? I'll just take a moment to kind of wait for the answer. Uh, so Venu, uh, Jagan uh, says that knowledge acquired from data is information. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Any, anybody else? Is data structured so it becomes of some use to us. Uh, basically, structured data is information is what Ashmit says. All right. Uh, Shiva says yep. that data is information which is analyzed. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. All right. So data right. I mean, is... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you get the hint of it. Data. Uh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I mean, uh, I think all of you are correct in some way or the other. Uh, like I said, you know, it's there's no right or wrong definition. So I think data, uh, and I think you guys also asked the question previously in the previous slide, you know, how to extract data and stuff. So the important aspect for an analyst or a team, you know, is not just getting the data, you know, but also filtering out the information element from the data, you know. For example, I'll give you an example from a cricketing term. You know, uh, if I say that, you know, I'm a bowler, uh, you know, who has bowled uh, <clears throat> for the last five years and maximum of my dismissals have been bowled in LBWs. What does that tell you? You know, in simple terms, it tells me that, you know, that I bowl predominantly wicket to wicket, you know, and that's my primary mode of dismissal, you know, a bowl or an LBW. That's how I do it. Okay, I see one more comment. Data is raw, while information is something which is derived from the analysis. Absolutely right. Yes. Correct. So, yeah. So, basically, you know, that was one example. Another example is that, you know, uh, say, uh, say Suresh Raina, you know, he had uh, issues with the short ball at some point of his career, right? So, data would tell me uh, that, you know, he was out, uh, you know, 
for under uh, you know under double figures for three consecutive innings you know information would tell me that you know he was out of a short ball you know fending it to say short leg or you know trying to pull it and getting caught at uh, square leg and stuff so that's information right so it's kind of filtering out raw data and not just looking at the outcome but also how the outcome happened you know so, and that's kind of doing an analysis of you know what led from point a to point b you know what was the journey why did this happen so that's the kind of analysis that we do as analysts again it's a journey from browsing statistics to analyzing opportunities and again all that information is useful but then how do we understand what is the opportunity here for the team to kind of do better that's the whole idea of doing performance analysis finding mistakes to learning from mistakes this is actually a very important as aspect of performance analysis because you know a lot of the teams and especially a lot of upcoming analysts and uh, you know young people think that you know performance analysis is all about finding mistakes i'm sorry that's not the right way to look at it it's all about learning you know it's all about how do we get better how do we improve that's the whole idea around performance analysis and i think that's something which we all need to understand because you know what happens if it if we if we look at it negatively by looking at it you know how do we find mistakes you know then it's kind of going out for a lost cause the teams the coaches you know then it kind of creates a negative environment wherein you know the players would start thinking you know the coach is just coming to me and saying that you know i did this wrong i did that wrong you know but then he's not telling me you know how do i do this you know how do i actually make the right move you know so that's the important aspect about you know learning from the mistakes instead of just finding the mistake and again the most important aspect from performance to progress you know you can do all the analysis in the world but then if the team is not progressing there's no there's no point of doing performance analysis so i think that's the whole uh, idea behind performance analysis like i said you know i've just broken it down into these four aspects how do we look at the coaching process when it comes to performance analysis so uh, the first thing which happens uh, you know around the coaching thing is the performance uh, which is the on field performance so here is where uh, you know the coach sees what's happening then there is a bit of an evaluation happening with the analyst you know we go, come back to the drawing board we come back to the dressing room we look at the videos and then there is a coach and player interaction you know that's where the analyst and the coach sit with the player or the players together doing a, a joint presentation and showing you know what were the opportunities that we grabbed in the last game or you know where were the opportunities that we missed and how how could we improve and then you know that interaction and that learning is then you know taken to the last stage which is on field and off field interactions you know kind of learning uh, so the same learnings that we look uh, you know in the interaction element we kind of take it to the field for example uh, uh, you know when i was bharat fc a football club you know there was a, a, a really good case study you know in the during the tournament right uh, so we had uh, uh, a few parameters set by the coach and you know they had mentioned uh, to us that you know uh, we need to track uh, the percentage of successful passes you know which is forward backward and you know how do we look at the entire percentage or how many were successful so when we looked at the passing you know we found out that you know on an average it was always about 85 to 86% you know in the first four or five games but we still could not figure out where were we where were we going wrong then when we actually looked at all the videos again you know we found out one common element it's not about uh, you know uh, passing the ball which is the problem it's all about holding the ball and keeping possession of the ball so you know that was a very important learning and you know that something which we figured out after four to five games and then we implemented one more parameter in terms of you know uh, loss of possession you know and that was something which kind of caught our attention and then we saw that you know in a game on an average we were losing the ball about 15 or 20 times from a position of strength you know the pass is completed but you know after the completion of the pass you know the player either loses the ball through a tackle or you know the player actually hits it out of bounds or you know makes a wrong uh, you know interception somewhere so i think that was something which was quite a quite a great learning and then we implemented that and used it for you know showing the players that you know boss it's not about just passing the ball correctly but it's also about holding the ball so then the coach started working on possession games and you know kind of looking to hold the ball and you know how do we keep it within our circle and not give it away so that was quite interesting so that was a live example from what i mentioned and then how do we evaluate performance first is a live observation then there is data analysis and reports and then there is video analysis and review and again this is something uh, and this is where actually the high quality evaluation happens so every game you know first the coach sees it live the way it is happening on field and that's also a very good bird's eye view of you know what's happening on the field when it's football you know there's something okay there's a question let me just check the chat window apart from cricket and football how much analysis is being used in other sports and how can we learn more about the analysis hardly okay 
Uh, I see that this question has come from somebody from Huddle. All right. So I think there's a lot of uh, analysis. Cricket and football, I'm just using it uh, as an example now because I've worked in those two uh, areas. But again, there's a lot of uh, technology being used in even Kabaddi. Uh, there's uh, video analysis being used in badminton. There's being It's being used in hockey. So, you know, there's a lot of things which is happening. So how do we learn is basically how do you, you know, you need to kind of get in touch with certain coaches or analysts who are working that arena, maybe do an internship with them, maybe join Huddle for, you know, why not do join Huddle and see if you can learn more about the other sports apart from cricket and football. Who's the best coach for a player, a coach who has taught from childhood or a coach who is coaching him or her currently? I think that's a slightly difficult question or a hypothetical question. Um, I won't be the best person to answer that honestly, because I'm not uh, you know, a coach per se. I, I mean, I have an ICC accreditation, but I'm not coaching currently or, you know, actively. But yeah, I think it's, if you ask me, it's uh, it's a mixture of both. I think, uh, but, if, uh, you know, the, the guy who has taught the person from childhood, that is the guy or the, uh, you know, girl or person who has actually has the most influence on the player because that's where the player learns technique. The player learns a lot of aspects of the game. The current coach, uh, you know, uh, again, coaching is a very, uh, subjective thing, you know, it's 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 all about understanding what not to change and what to understand as a strength of the player. And, you know, how do we kind of fine tune those finer elements to kind of make the player better? You know, you cannot teach, uh, you know, an 18 year old or a 20 year old a new technique suddenly and expect them to kind of, you know, come back and bounce back and, you know, show that right away. It takes time, you know, you, you need to unlearn whatever you've learned from childhood days. So obviously that's a very, very big challenging aspect. But what I'll say is that, you know, how do you fine tune and play to the player's strengths, you know, and that's that's something which you kind of get to see nowadays. You know, you see the Virender Sehwags, you know, how they play, right? So I, I'm sure that if, you know, you would have heard that famous story about Greg Chappell trying to teach him footwork and, you know, trying to ask him to, you know, put his uh, front leg in the, uh, you know, forward and stretch it and, you know, then try to defend the ball or drive the ball. But, you know, we all know after that what happened, you know, you never listened to him and, you know, we all know what kind of a player Sevak was. So it's, like I said, you know, it's coaching is all about understanding each individual player's strength and, you know, then working upon it. Yeah, so coming back to this, uh, live, live observation, data analysis and report and video analysis and review. This is how the high quality evaluation happens. Okay, so the most important aspect, and I think a lot of you guys have a question around uh, what does a performance analyst do, who is a performance analyst? So I think I'll just try and address that here. Okay, there's some more questions. Many say that to get into a sports industry, be it sports analyst, coaching, scouting, everything other than a professional athlete, we need to have a network inside the sports industry to get a career. Um, so I think uh, there's two ways to look at it, uh, this question. It's an interesting question for sure. I, for sure, I did not have a network. Uh, I did not have an insider in the sports industry to kind of look forward to. Honestly, it was all um, self-driven networking, if I could say so. You know, uh, the, the advantage that I had was I used to play a sport. I used to play cricket uh, at the league level or the club level or the corporate level. So, you know, that kind of kept me abreast with the game. Uh, that kind of kept me motivated. And, you know, from there, uh, I used LinkedIn effectively. I used social media effectively to kind of get in touch with a lot of people to understand, you know, how, uh, what and how they are doing stuff. And, you know, there were a few companies uh, back then who are doing something in cricket specifically. So, you know, that's how I got in touch with them. And uh, what, I'll, what I'll advise all of you is that, you know, see, uh, a lot of guys, even today, you know, they also come to me and I, I, I never say no or I, I never deny an opportunity to kind of mentor somebody. I never, you know, ignore somebody's request. I always try to guide them by giving them a heads up that, you know, this is what you need to do. What I did is something which I can share with you. And uh, I'm not trying to boast about myself, but I'm just giving you an example of, you know, what I did. Uh, when I used to write to people, you know, specifically on LinkedIn and stuff, you know, I realized that, you know, like me, there'll be so many other guys who would be wanting to do something similar, right? Where is my differentiation? What do I do need? Uh, what do I need to do to kind of look different? You know, what do I need to do to stand out from the crowd, you know? in a positive way and, you know, make myself heard, make myself seen, uh, you know, by people. So what I did was, uh, you know, and since I mentioned cricket was my first love and, you know, I used to play a lot of cricket. Um, so I actually uh, made a presentation of sorts. Uh, for example, uh, you know, I, there was an India versus Sri Lanka test match going on. Uh, this was, I think, 2010. And 
what i figured out was you know a lot of people just claim that they they are they love sport they love cricket and you know they want to be an analyst but you know what i thought was going one step ahead and showing people that you know what can i do as an analyst right so i i did not have any software back then uh, to work with uh, and you know what i just did was picked up an excel sheet uh, made a table of uh, you know a lot of data points for example bowler batsman ball type uh, in swing out swing off spin leg spin blah 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 length you know outcome boundary single whatever right so i made a complete list of uh, you know the parameters or the outcomes of what's happening in the game and ball by ball i actually took one full day to kind of feed in data into an excel sheet you know that's a lot of that's a lot of donkey work that i did but you know it kind of helped me because you know at the end of the day i had a lot of rich data to work with so i used that excel sheet and uh, using that excel sheet i did some calculation that did some analysis you know a very amateurish analysis if i could say so using excel sheets but then you know a lot a lot of rich data was derived from that and what i did was i actually used it to make a presentation and that presentation actually made a lot of difference because you know i realized that you know before that when i used to write to people you know i never used to get a very you know i never used to get a great response back you know it was like okay yeah so what you know that, that's the kind of response i used to get but then after looking at that presentation you know a lot of the guys started responding back to me positively at least you know they used to give me feedback or used to they used to say wow that's a great presentation we really like what you have done and you know at least that kind of made it a starting point for me to kind of get uh, noticed by people so what i'll advise you guys if you are looking to make a career out of it is try and and you know nowadays there are so many other tools as well there's tableau there's you know so many other uh, things that you could do you could use r programming python if you are a programmer and stuff you know i'm not one but you know i'm just suggesting that if you guys are into that domain you know use all that knowledge to kind of come up with your own analytics tool or your own analytics uh, piece to kind of impress people and then put it in a presentation maybe use the uh, you know current uh, india versus australia series or if you're a footballer use the isl or you know any other football league to kind of show some data to coaches or to other teams you know uh, to get noticed uh do companies like quick boards or cricket boards uh, like bcci ca use their own database or is there an official database of icc uh, so again uh, it depends uh, there's there's a lot of companies which do uh, uh, you know analytics from the back end they also provide software for doing analytics so there is uh, okay i'm just coming to that part let me just address that by using this uh, performance analyst slides i'll come to that how do we do that can we be an analyst for more than one sport yes you can all right let me just uh, okay Uh, so you know, i i feel yeah. like you know uh, like a lot of students come to me as well with the same question what i feel is that building the personal brand as you mentioned building a personal brand in the industry yep. is very very important yep. like uh, mm-hmm. you need to do your own analysis and as venu mentioned you know put up ppts put your work on twitter on linkedin yep. uh, this would help yep. getting noticed in the industry yeah that's right uh an interesting question here is there any college or university specifically teaching sports technology and analytics and what's the eligibility uh again so there are a few sports management uh, universities doing that thing as well plus i think uh, if i'm not wrong aditya i'm mad about sports uh, we are coming up with one right uh, soon for teaching analytics yes. and technology yeah, yes correct. absolutely yeah so i think aditya will give you some heads up of that uh, after the webinar so you could get in touch with him he'll be sharing a link with you uh, i'll be conducting one for sure uh, uh, i think sometime in february and uh, <clears throat> yeah you could you can get in touch with aditya for that as well all right uh, what's there something which i missed uh, can a guy not so good with numbers be an effective sports analyst uh so okay so here's how i'll answer that i am not a guy who's good with numbers per se i'm not a finance guy i'm not a you know mathematical mathematical genius or something but uh, what i will say is that you know you need to have a good understanding of how numbers can solve a problem you know i won't say that you know you have to be number crunching all the time it's not it's not an accounting job you know being an analyst it's all about and it's more than numbers as well you know it's all about understanding the event you know the visual the video versus what's happening with the numbers you know so it's a combination of both so i won't say you have to be really good at numbers but i mean you can't be bad as well you know but you need to just understand from a perspective of uh, you know how does that fit into the coaching element okay so quickly coming back to the presentation the performance analyst 
who is a performance analyst you know and this is something which a lot of people ask me a lot of guys have a questions about uh, questions about and uh, you know i've just put it into very very simple terms all that a performance analyst does is this he is basically a chief information officer in my uh, you know view uh, all that the performance analyst does is collect all the relevant information around a game you know around a tournament around a team around a player and then hand it over to the coach or coaching staff or you know to the management i think it's a very underrated role uh, honestly because you know obviously performance analysts cannot take credit for a team's success you know uh, or you know or failures as well you know uh, but the point is that you know they are the backbone of the team because we are living in the information age right now and there's so much of data so much of information flying around you know how does one make sense of that information and how does one collect all that information that's where the performance analyst role comes into the picture <clears throat> so what is the analyst role you know i think i'll just break it down to very simple elements what does the analyst do uh, and this is something which even i used to do when i was working with bharat fc or the maharashtra premier league i think the first and foremost thing is before getting into a tournament check the uh, team schedule you know find out about uh, whom the opponents are uh, uh, who are the opponents who whom we are playing are going, going to play next researching stats and compiling videos of opposition teams and players this is something which i used to do with my coach uh, at bharat fc every time because you know he used to ask specific things about you know what the opposition players are doing he used to ask me about uh, you know who is taking their attacking corners you know how is that formation in defending corners what is their overall team formation you know in football in terms of it's 4-4-2 4-3-2 1 you know how are they playing and stuff and uh, we used to come up with a video based presentation for pre match briefing which is more strategic and tactical uh most important element i think this is another thing which you need to understand as an analyst you need to be good with cameras uh, because you know you need to film the game in certain situation in cricket you know it's very easy being an analyst uh, because uh, first is that uh, you know you get a complete broadcast of feed which is brilliant to work with and uh, you know you have a bit of a gap between two deliveries so obviously there's a lot of time for the analyst to take a breather when he's uh, uh, keying in the data he or she um uh, for football it's slightly difficult because you know we never used to rely on broadcaster feed because you know the broadcaster feed is slightly um, different to work with they focus predominantly on players specifically or the ball whereas the coach or the analyst you know we wanted a complete birds eye view of the uh, football pitch for example we wanted to see where the players are standing in formations and you know how is the ball being transferred from the from the defensive third to midfield to attacking third you know so that was the overall thing that we had to see and uh, broadcaster sometimes used to focus on the uh, you know the crowd the coaches or you know the ball in general so you know that's something which we could not work with so that's why we used to have uh, you know our own feed which we used to analyze the game from so that's another thing which the analyst does in certain occasions so uh, you know it it's also a part of the role which is slightly underrated you need to be a good climber you know you need to find good vantage points on stadium then you know climb the rooftops and go and strategically place the camera there and you know get a good feed so that's another thing which i used to do and if you are aware of uh, pune there's a stadium called balewadi stadium where we used to play the football games and you know i used to stand on the asbestos rooftop and you know it used to be pretty shaky but then you have to find a few bricks to kind of place the uh, you know uh, the the tripod and then you know try and film the game from there and that view was excellent because you know that kind of gives you a bird bird's eye view of the entire game most important element after filming the game coding or tagging the game through a software and looking for opportunities missed chances converted chances for the teams areas of improvement as well as individual stats this is the most important aspect of an analyst this is what the analyst does uh, you know using the software and you know when my when i say coding or tagging coding or tagging is basically you see an event happening on video and then you tag it for example you know this is my team you know india is playing you know india made a positive uh, you know what do you say successful pass i tag it as a successful pass and that tag you know and that video is kind of linked together so when you show it to the coach you can actually show just instances not the entire game uh showing the game to the coach key stats videos moments and preparing feedback for players giving players individual videos and performance indicators yes that's another thing which we do important question guys this is what you guys have been asking uh, again credentials or qualifications to be an analyst um <clears throat> it's it's a slightly subjective uh, area or a topic because um, certain countries have uh, you know uh, provisions wherein you know only uh, 
qualified coaches or ex players can become analysts or you know people who have played the game at certain level or uh, who has done some kind of coaching credential but whereas in india or even in some other na- player places as well you know uh, we don't need to be a coach to become an analyst that's what i feel uh, you know if you have really good understanding of the sport you know and that's the first and foremost point in this uh, slide you know you have to have extensive knowledge of a particular sport of his, his or her choice you know and that is the most important aspect right if you don't have passion for the sport if you don't have knowledge about the sport right you know then you are uh, you are not qualified to become an analyst because you know the coach will figure out and find out you know the first day itself that you know this guy doesn't understand sport this guy doesn't understand cricket or football you know what's happening so you need to be aware of rules regulations you need to be under, aware of statistics what is important in the modern day coaching uh, you know standpoint what does the broadcaster show every time and you know what do you need to understand from those analysis uh, point of view and stuff so how do you develop that i think the way i developed this is basically looking at you know watching sport day in and day out you know i lo- i watch a lot of cricket and not just the sport which is going on the action which is going on on the field but i also watch a lot of uh, videos or analysis uh, you know uh, sessions done by all these commentators and stuff you know pre game or post game or even on youtube and stuff you know how do you analyze technique how do you understand uh, where the game was you know twisted in some other uh, teams fa- favor and stuff so that's those are the key elements that you need to understand uh second point is important uh, sound knowledge of computers and peripheral devices video camera tv tuner cards converters and i think this is something which you can gather on the way uh, i don't expect people to understand this from day one obviously this is something which you will um you know understand on the job as well because a lot of things are different for different sport for different teams how they use these uh, you know uh, peripheral devices and computers uh, i figured out a lot uh, when i started working with uh, you know huddle or coach tech uh, back then and uh, and also when i started working with a team i used to understand you know how this specific camera works and you know how this tv tuner card works and how is the best way to kind of get the video onto my laptop third and most important point guys and i think this is again a very very underrated skill communication and listening skills um this is where uh, it's it's a very important uh, you know element when it comes to uh, you know being an analyst uh, i'll give you an example you know so when i worked with bharat fc uh, and even when i worked with couple of other teams you know the coaches used to be spread across you know one was from england from yorkshire one was from uh, you know montenegro which was you know formerly yugoslavia and you know so there are so many varieties of people coming into the uh, you know picture you know and what you need to understand is everybody has different cultures different communication uh, you know different way of speaking so i think you need to be able to understand what the coach or the coaching staff is telling you you know so i'm sure a lot of you guys must have known about the famous yorkshire accent right when jeffrey boycott used to come and come on or and say you know my mum would be lining up to play that you know yeah this is so this is cricket this is struggling you know is this guy struggling and you know that that's the kind of accent that he used to have right so when when my coach came in at bharat fc so he had the same yorkshire accent so you know he was like first day used to tell me hey with you let's go for a run and you know i'm going to get some money from my bank and i was like i wasn't able to understand what he was saying but then since you know i used to listen very carefully then i used to understand you know okay this is what he means so i think uh, communication and listening is very very important because you know every coach has a different way of working and you know as an analyst the first and foremost thing that you need to remember is that you know you are just an enabler there you are not you are not the coach you are not there to tell the coach what to do you know you are just an enabler you are there to present facts and figures and data you know you cannot tell the coach that this is what we need to do this is what the team needs to do that's the coach's job you know so your job is predominantly being an enabler technology itself is an enabler it's not something which is overpowering the coaching staff or the team right it's just an enabler to make better decisions you know and classic instance is when i was working with kings 11 punjab in the ipl right uh, as a part of an organization so the, that was to 2011 i think and uh, michael bevan was the coach the famous australian uh, cricketer so you know i had a bit of a showdown with him i, I won't say showdown but it's kind of you know i was i was getting too excited when i was making a presentation to him and uh, you know and then uh, at an instant he saw me and asked me you know so now you're trying to teach me coaching is it so i was like oh my god did i wait, did i did i kind of cross the line there and you know talk too much and show my enthusiasm uh, you know in a way that it's kind of offensive so you know those are the things that you need to learn and you need to be always you know respecting the coach and his or her decisions and you know you have to just pass on 
the data or the information. You cannot overpower the coach and say that this is what we need to do. Or you cannot talk directly to the players and say that, you know, this is what you're doing right or wrong. That's not your job. That's the coach's job. All right, guys, some reports and KPIs. Okay, before coming to this, let me just check. There are a couple of more questions, I believe. Um, all right. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point using Power BI. Yep. Yeah. Software names, I think there are multiple softwares. Uh, again, uh, you know, in cricket, there are a few companies which I'll talk about uh, at the end of this presentation. You could you could approach them as well. Is there a difference between a video analysis and performance analysis? If there is, what is it and what among this? I mean, it's, it's the same according to me. Um, they are called by both names, video analysis, performance, anal performance analyst, video analyst. So it's pretty much the same, in my opinion, at least. Some of the reports and KPI, so the one on top, the football one is what I made for Bharat FC. Cricket is something which I worked with a company uh, called Sports Insight. And that was a cricket report. There's also biomechanics, which is, uh, you know, and this is, again, this is predominantly what a video analyst does. But again, this requires a bit of coaching knowledge because, you know, this is all about techniques. This is all about understanding sport in detail. So this is where probably coaching might be handy because unless you are a coach, you won't understand technique. Analyst's perspective, an event happening once is an incident, an event happening twice, a possible coincidence, but an event happening more than twice is basically a trend. And I think this is where, as an analyst, you need to understand, you know, what is a trend. However, as analysts, you know, just like a proper detective, we are not supposed to believe in coincidences. So, you know, you, sh you should always dig deep and understand, you know, what's happening in the sport. I'm just giving you a few examples. I'll just breeze through, breeze through these. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on these. These are some of the pre-match briefings that we used to do at Bharat FC. This is uh, something which I used to make at Par, make with PowerPoint and you know show the coach, game analysis, team formations, and these are just examples. You know, possession statistics. Uh, I don't want to dig too much deep into statistics because again, that's a part of the course that we might do later on. Today is just a high-level overview. Uh, game stats, set pieces, goalkeeper save card. So these are what you're seeing right now is basically just stats, but in the software, you will have stats plus video combination. So if you click on a particular stat, you know, for example, guys, if we are watching from Huddle, we used to use Sports Code, you know, uh, for Bharat FC. So Sports Code is a software which we used to, you know, use for all tagging of videos. So it used to give you videos plus statistics. I don't want to go into these videos right now uh, because, you know, like I said, those are a part of, uh, the advanced course that we are having. Um, these are some of the popular uh, sports technology companies. Sports Tech, which I used to work with, is now called as Huddle. Uh, there's Prozo and there's Catapult, there's Synergy Sports. Sports Mechanics is uh, one of the old timers in cricket. Kadamba Technology is also is pretty much there in cricket. There's Boomstat Analysis out of Australia, which does um, <clears throat> you know a lot of analytics on the cloud, which is an interesting platform. Maxport, Video Observer. So yeah, there are multiple companies in this space. What, what I'll advise you is that do a bit of research, do a bit of, you know, scanning of the market. Try and see if you are a booming, uh, you know, if you are a budding analyst, if you can get an internship to work with some of these companies, or if you can get to work with these companies to understand how analytics is done in sport. Next topic, guys, uh, athlete tracking, uh, use of wearable tech devices in sports. And this is where I'll probably use some of my experiences from Catapult. I'll be using some of their, uh, you know, uh, things that they show to the customers. How is it important? It's a kind of a three in a box approach, uh, performance analysis, strength and conditioning and injury prevention. I think that's something which is kind of very, very important because if you look at it, it's kind of encompassing everything. You're looking at the player performance through videos. You're looking at strength and conditioning. How do you kind of make your players better? And you are looking at injury prevention as well. And I think that's the most important element in today's day and world, uh, day and age kind of uh, you know, understanding how do we prevent injuries, you know, because sport has become so professional and so much um, stressful on the player's body because, you know, you're traveling literally every day in a tournament like an IPL, right? So how do you make sure that you have the most fit players on the field? So that's something which, uh, you know, these technologies tell you. What are the wearable technologies uh, doing? I'm taking an example from Catapult. Uh, again, this is all available publicly on their website and stuff. Uh, you have a wearable technology device, uh, which you see on the left. It's basically something that you fit in your sports vest that they provide inside, uh, you know, between your shoulder blades. And this is something which you wear inside your uh, jerseys, the match jerseys. And what you get at the end is analytics and reports. What does the technology entail? It has a high speed processor uh, because for processing real time information. It has a battery life up to six hours. Uh, it has an antenna which uses 
you know, the GPS locations for data tracking. The three important inertial sensors that they use is basically a 3D accelerometer. They have a gyroscope and a magnetometer. What does an accelerometer do? As the name suggests, uh, you know, acceleration and deceleration. That's something which they measure. Uh, a gyroscope is basically a 3D axis spinning wheel uh, looking at change in directions of a player. Uh, magnetometer is basically a compass which tells you which direction the player is going towards. Important element is they also have HR uh, you know, monitor, which is a heart rate monitor, which tells you a bit about internal load. You know, all the other factors tell you about external load as well, but this tells you more about internal load on the body. How do you make informed decisions about your players? You have a variable device, you have reports and analysis, you have a coach, and then you uh, look at that data and then you minimize injury risk, rehabilitate and maximize performance. <clears throat> These are some of the information derived from uh, the catapult uh, device, uh, you know, which which I used to work with, uh, with with teams. You have distance, acceleration, deceleration, change of directions, and you know, multiple things like player load. Player load is something important, which is you know a, a formula which is which was proprietary for catapult. Uh, you know, they used to use it to kind of measure the aggregate value of the entire uh, you know effort put in by a player in all three axes, which is forward, backward, right, and left, and then up and down. You know, so there was a proprietary formula that they derive for player load. And why it is important is basically, I'll, take, I'll give you an example, right? Uh, let's take a football game, right? Uh, if you say player A has run, uh, say, 13 kilometers in the game, and player B has run, say, nine kilometers in the game. So is it fair to say that player A has done more job than player B? You know, is that a fair analysis? I mean, if you look at it in totality, it may not be because, you know, again, this this is how we look at player load because, you know, player A might have done a lot of long distance running here and there, but player B might have actually done a lot of lot more in terms of intensity, right? So player A had more volume, player B had more intensity. Player B had done, you know, uh, constant um, high, uh, high sprinting, uh, you know, in the midfield and then, you know, stopping, turning, jumping. And you have multiple things that will actually add to the player load element. Whereas player A would have done more of, you know, jogging from A at point A to point B, you know, uh, if, if he's a winger or something. So, so those are the kind of analytics which are derived and, you know, which gives you a complete, you know, uh, perspective of what each player has done. So that's the important aspect to look at. And just quickly look at the chat window. Okay, nothing more now. All right. How do we monitor? Uh, how do we monitor this? It's kind of real time as well as post. Uh, real time gives you certain statistics which can be actually even used. So FIFA allows uh, real time stats to be uh, delivered to the desk, uh, you know, uh, where the analyst is sitting, um, and you can actually use that data to look at, say, player substitution. You know, because if you have, uh, say, a considerable amount of data to suggest that you know after these many kilometers or after this much of time, a player starts getting fatigued or tired, you know that's the best time to replace him or her, you know? So that kind of data can be definitely used in real time. Post-match data is something which you can definitely look at understanding the load on the player's body, you know? So each game is different, each uh, venue is different, weather conditions are different, you know? So how do you understand in what uh, perspective, you know, what player has done, you know? So what the player has done. So the best way to look at it is, you know, looking at the stats in game, as well as in training, you know. So in training, the stats will give you something which is more closer to what, you know, they, uh, the he or she will do during the game. And then you can understand, you know, what is the load on the player's body. Why do you need athlete tracking? Uh, and again, these are very principal questions that we need to answer. How hard was today's session? How did it compare with yesterday's session? How did it compare with my overall plan? You know, so how do you measure that? That's what these kind of devices help you doing that. Because, you know, a player might come and tell you at the end of the day, you know, today I'm very tired, you know, but Ultimately, it might be the tiredness might be because of some other reason, you know, it may not be because of, uh, you know, just what he did on the field, it could be because, because of the weather, it could be because he's carrying an injury, you know, then you can actually do a comparative analysis that, you know, if he did X number of uh, kilometers yesterday, or, you know, if he did X number of sprints yesterday, you know, why did he do less today? Is there is there a niggle that he's carrying? Is there something else? Is there a psychological reason, heart rate, you know, you can check everything. <clears throat> who was my hardest worker today? Who was my least hardest worker today? Okay, I have a question, I believe. With so much of technologies, Team India could not manage injuries in Australia. Your opinions on the same, please. Uh, interesting question. And again, um, what I will say is that uh, what happened uh, on the Australian tour is basically a bit of an outlier. 
uh, you know, it's an anomaly uh, because of the fact that, you know, last year, whatever happened due to COVID is something which we cannot compare with whatever happened year on year before that. Because a lot of these players were under lockdown. Uh, a lot of these players for a fair share of the entire, uh, you know, year, you know, say almost about seven to eight months, they did not have access to training facility. They may have done gymming at home, a bit of running here and there, but, you know, being in the competitive environment, being in that kind of a setup, you know, they get, they, they say that, you know, always uh, whatever you do in the nets, you know, is different than what you do on the pitch, right? So there's nothing like game training or game practice. So I think that's something which has definitely been a hindrance, especially for the faster bowlers, because, you know, the fast bowlers, it's a completely different animal altogether. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's something which, is, which takes a lot of toll on their body. And that's why those soft tissue injuries may have come up. Plus, they had a three-month-long IPL. They were living in a bio-bubble. So, you know, there are multiple things which have come to the uh, picture. And, you know, I think that's a very relevant question. But, you know, what I will put it up, put it up to is basically, you know, it's, uh, it's a combination of what happened because of COVID last year. Whereas uh, with, you know, the, you know, the more cricket you play, the more better your body becomes, right? The more sport you play, the more your body is acquainted to kind of challenges. It works both ways. You know, the more you are susceptible to injuries as well, but, you know, it also readies your body, you know. So, that's that's another thing which I'll put it down to. So, that's why, you know, p- people are having hamstring injuries. People are having soft tissue injuries and stuff. <clears throat> how can we push our guys without overloading them? That's the most important aspect, guys. Uh, you know, how do we kind of understand what the players have to do? And, you know, how do we not risk them for injuries? Because, you know, if whatever you are doing during training, you know, that tells you a bit about, you know, how much of load can a body take. And that's also beauty. The beauty of sport is that, you know, that's also different for different players, you know. Then you need to understand, you know, how much should we load the players, you know, without kind of risking them injuries, risking their injuries. Um, which are my best players ready for the game? That also tells you a story, you know, which players are ready. Uh, are my injured players back on track? So I think this is something very important because, you know, with all this data, you will have a lot of information around what was the player's performance during pre-injury. Uh, stage, you know, and then what is the player's uh, stage now, you know, so how how is he coming back on track so in terms of rehabilitation? That's an important aspect here. Again, this is something which I already spoke about. How much did we work versus how hard did we work? How much did we work is volume? How hard did we work is intensity? Uh, I won't get into too much of details for this. This is more of strength and conditioning specifics. Uh, so, you know, it may not be relevant. Again, this is also like I spoke earlier. How did today's session compare with the team, with positions, with drill and players? That's something which you can create a point of reference using these tech. When you see periodization, you know, uh, this is again something which uh, you could do. It's it dependent upon it's dependent upon uh, each sport, each coach, you know, how they want to do it. Match day minus four, you know, volume is kind of, uh, you know, volume and intensity are kind of hand in hand. As you kind of approach the match day, the volume goes down, the intensity goes up. You know, that's generally how coaches look at it. You have something known as chronic load and acute load. The chronic load is a load that the player is carrying in the last 35 days. Acute load is, you know, it's in the last seven days. That also tells you a story about where the injury performance, injury levels are or the load levels are for the player. I don't want to get into that. Yeah, so this is uh, benefits of using advanced technologies in sport. It's an evidence-based coaching and learning approach. Why do we say it's an evidence-based coaching and learning approach? Because, you know, you're not just talking out of thin air. You are actually showing an evidence in the form of a video or a stat which complements the video and then telling the player or the coach that this is what is happening. So as a coach, you know, it kind of increases my credibility because you can I can actually go and tell a player, you know, what is happening on the pitch, you know, and this is what you're doing. And if I just go and tell him that, you know, boss, this is not working, you maybe you could do this, you could do that, you know, it's kind of giving a feedback, but you know, that feedback is not supported with any evidence to show. When I say evidence, not in a negative way, but at least, you know, a visual way of learning is always the best way of learning. How do we monitor and improve performance? You know, that's also something which can be used for uh, looking at, uh, you know, video analysis and performance analysis. Coaches and players are more accountable. Again, this is where uh, accountability comes into picture. Coaches, feel more accountable for doing their job and, you know, showing the players what's happening. Players are more accountable because they know that the coaches and the entire team is watching what's happening. So, you know, they also feel obliged to kind of give it their best all the time. You know, they can't, they have nowhere to hide as well. Franchise owners have full access to reports, videos, highlights for each game. So, you know, again, that's also giving them complete 360 degree feedback. I think I have some question coming up. Is the diet plan of a player also part of the analysis? Um, 
it's something which again i'm not a strength and conditioning expert or a physio to uh, you know uh, give an expert opinion on this but again this is something which uh, definitely is a part of the analysis because you know a lot of sport require players to be uh, of a certain body type you know in terms of weight in terms of height and stuff uh, in terms of you know the physical structure and stuff um i wish to ask you whether the wearable gps devices vary from outfield players and goalkeepers yes that's a very good question definitely yes i think catapult also had a device called as the g5 which is for goalkeeper specific stats it gives you certain more aspects uh, in terms of the jumps that they do from left to right left to right and up and down and stuff so good question yes it happens yes that's there is a difference in devices okay guys so i think we are uh, I'll just quickly breeze to fan engagement. Uh, this is something which I'm currently doing with uh, Fanisco. Um, there are a lot of analytics divide, uh, you know, de uh, you know, derived out of this for fans. Uh, if you are into sports marketing and if you are, you know, looking at uh, joining a club as a marketing guy or an events guy or something like that, or you know, in the operations team, this could be of interest to you as well. How do we look at the evolution of sharing information in sports? Right now, I'm just go going a little backwards here. Uh, you know, it started off with newspapers, then it started off with websites, then it was all about statistics, video analysis, performance analysis, player tracking, GPS track, and now you know, if you see the new revolution, and I'm sure all of you young guys watching this will agree that you know, mobile apps, social media, you know, it's created a kind of a revolution of sorts in sport. so everybody is consuming sports content you know in the form of mobile applications in the form of ott live streaming and stuff so it has evolved you know beyond you know what we could imagine say 10 years back so that's how the evolution of sports has happened the only constant which has changed remarkably you know and this is actually a paradox of sorts is the fan why do i say that because you know there are multiple ways of looking at fans you know our fathers and our grandfathers would have had different way of looking at sports you know they would go and watch the game live you know even i would love to do that as well right but then today's modern day fan you know has become completely different you know he or she will have multiple avenues to look at sport you know they may not want to go to the stadium or they may not even want to watch it live they might just want to watch the highlights package or you know key moments during the game or you know chat with social media chat on social media with their friends about what's happening by just looking at the score line so that's how the fandom has kind of changed um yep <clears throat> so what's the impact of a die hard fan the die hard fan dictates the way the way uh, you know the business of sport is played and presented sports and players exist because of that one single entity the fan and you know fans actually create an ecosystem for entertainment and obviously generating dollars modern day fan follows comments and shares content demands exclusivity wants to be the best amongst his or her peers you know again this is something which is very very relevant because you know i'm sure all of you who are consuming sport you know are looking at uh, following commenting sharing content and you know you want that exclusivity that i am the die hard fan of this team you know you want to be known in your uh, you know amongst your peers that you know i'm the guy who actually loves this this sports person or this team you know and i'm the biggest fan that's how the modern day fan looks at the sports it looks at sport so you know how do we leverage what the fan can offer engagement monetization and you know innovation that's something which we look at and again sponsorship and revenue opportunities what do we do at fanisco and this is i'm just talking about fanisco which i'm currently uh, currently working on right now the project uh, we are looking at identification engagement retention and monetization that's the four step approach that we have the four pillars of fan engagement onboarding engaging and rewarding fans i'll just quickly browse browse through this and uh, you know i don't want to touch too much upon this in this uh, element of the webinar we can do this afterwards when we have the entire course uh we have uh, you know a mobile application that we built for teams we have social augmented reality we have gamification and stuff so that's something which we offer um these are some of the gamification elements that we do which is you know then we have leaderboards and you know badges and loyalty points for fans and i'm sure you would have seen a lot of apps uh, nowadays having all these things right so that's that's one way of doing fan engagement i think augmented reality is kind of the future because you know these mixed reality experiences uh, you know they are playing a key role in terms of fan engagement in today's modern world you can even do that uh, using social media if you see instagram i mean okay here's a shout out for you guys go to atk mohan bagan's instagram page or chennai nfc's instagram page there you will see fanisco uh, you know 
they have developed a few social augmented reality filters. So you just need to click on the smiley icon, go and try that filter out, and you will get actually a filter out filter you know on your face. How do we get sponsors involved? This is the monetization part of it. Uh, you, you see the sponsor logos on the bottom, you know, and uh, that's how you kind of get sponsors to get involved with gamification. And you know, this is how the teams and clubs and leagues make money out of fan engagement. How do we monetize advertising sponsorship, loyalty and rewards, and then e-commerce? You know, you could even buy and uh, you know your uh, your merchandise and team jerseys and everything online. So that's that's how you do fan engagement and e-commerce. Uh, just a few elements of fan analytics, uh, how many users have downloaded content engagement, gamification performance and stuff. So yeah, so I won't dig too much deep into this. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of fan engagement. And yeah, that's about it. So the, this is my uh, contact detail on email and on social media. You guys feel free to get in touch with me on LinkedIn or on email or on Twitter. If you have something to tweet about, if you like the webinar, please do mention this on social media handles. If you want to talk to me separately or get mentorship, talk to Aditya. He'll be getting, telling you more about it. Definitely. And, you know, if you guys want to connect with Venu over uh, LinkedIn, uh, so, you know, like I definitely help you with that. I have posted on LinkedIn as well. So guys, we'll be wrapping up the webinar now. Uh, just a couple of things which I wanted to talk about. So Venu, if possible, can I share my screen? Yeah, yeah of course. Let me just stop sharing my yeah. Yep. Uh, so guys, as uh, you know, many of you ask this question that, uh, you know, uh, what kind of courses we provide and, you know, what kind of mentorship or course details you, uh, you would expect from Venue. So basically we are coming up with a course with Venue uh, and that is, uh, that's what I wanted to show you guys. It's, it'll just take three to four minutes. Uh, so stay with us. And towards the end of the webinar, I'll also talk about the certificate details and about the feedback as well. So both of you, it is very, very important to us. And, you know, just wanted to talk to you guys about it. So firstly, coming up, uh, uh, talking about the course. Uh, so we are coming up with a course uh, on sports analytics and technology with Venu Gopal, uh, uh, with Venu. Uh, so here, uh, here is, are all the details about the course. Uh, so we are right now offering a flat 50% discount on the course. I'll just talk about the price and everything in a uh, moment. So uh, if anyone is registering by tomorrow, we are offering a free one month mentorship program with Venu. So like if you feel that, you know, if Venu could help you in landing a job in the industry or, you know, uh, maybe would help you in making a career, like uh, progress your career towards it, uh, you, uh, we will be uh, glad to help you out with it, uh, with our mentorship program. So that comes complementary with the course. Uh, so what will we be covering? So we'll be covering, you know, things like sports technology, performance analysis, how teams are using it. We'll be covering athlete tracking in details, uh, you know, like what athletes need to do, uh, what analysts need to do, uh, you know, with the variable technologies in, ad, uh, in order to track injuries uh, better uh, in all forms. Uh, you know, we'll also be talking about the career opportunities which are there available in the field and, you know, uh, how the Indian market is uh, performing, what are the kind of job roles, what are the kind of sports tech companies which hire people in this particular field. Uh, this is about Venu, you know, like, as I mentioned, he needs no introduction. He is uh, someone who has been in the industry since the past 15 years and, uh, you know, like he's one of the stalwarts of the industry. So he'll be taking the course completely live online. And there would be no pre-recorded component as such. Everything would be live and it, it's going to be a very interactive course. Uh, so talking about the duration and stuff, there would be six sessions of two hours each. So 12 hours of content in total. Uh, these 12 hours are live classes. Apart from it, you will be getting a, uh, some tasks and assignments, which you'll have to do it in your off time with your respective groups. We'll be forming groups, uh, you know, we'll be sharing the details for the same as well. And there would be a WhatsApp group. So if you have any questions of the class during the class, you can obviously ask it in the class. If you have any questions of the class, you can always ask us in the WhatsApp group and we'll be happy to help you out. So all sports enthusiasts, uh, technologists, you know, tech buffs, or anyone, you know, who is interested in the field uh, uh, can register for the same. Uh, talking about pre-required qualifications, there are no pre-required uh, prerequisites as such from our side. We will be, uh, you know, teaching everything from scratch. If you are an MBA student, if you are a tech, B tech student, BCom student, 
if you are in cl your class 12 you know looking to make a career in sports uh, we are there for everyone it's uh, you don't uh, need to have any prerequisites as such no pre required knowledge in java python or anything of that sort so that's it uh, if you uh, i'll also be sharing the link to this course page very soon uh, i have mentioned over here you know what all we'll be covering in each day so uh, you know digital fan engagement performance analysis uh, athlete tracking uh, video analysis we'll be covering all of it in details and uh, also you know uh, the the classes would be live but we'll also be sharing the recordings of each and every session so if someone is not able to attend the live class they can always attend the a uh, uh, pre-recorded uh, session and then attend the ne next live class uh, whenever we conduct it and it's on a daily basis from uh, it starts on a wednesday so wednesday thursday friday and then again on monday tuesday and wednesday so uh, six continuous days uh, uh, with a break in between so there would be a very very big assignment that we'll be allotting you after day 3 which you will have to do with your groups uh, over the weekend so that's it you'll also be getting a shareable certificate uh, it's a certificate of completion for the course uh, and now coming to the important part uh, you know about the price so uh, if you go by the industry stand uh, standards you know it should be approximately 12000 rupees for a course like this but you know we have brought down the course price from 12000 to 7999 but further you know for the people who are attending this particular webinar we are offering a further discount an additional discount of 50% so there is a, a, a coupon code which is sports at uh, four thousand. Uh, I'll be just sharing the uh, coupon code with all of you. If you apply this particular code, the price reduces from eight thousand to four thousand. So this is only for the people who are attending uh, this particular webinar, and it's uh, only applicable till tomorrow uh, midnight. So that's it about the per, uh, this particular course. So if you are interested, you can definitely enroll for it. I can guarantee you, you know, this is one of the best particular courses that you'll get in the market. So that's about the course. Now, the second thing would be uh, the feedback. Uh, like uh, we, uh, we would love to hear feedback from you. Uh, this is something very, very important to us. And that is why, you know, we have posted about this particular session on LinkedIn. Uh, if, uh, you know, like if you guys liked the session, if you felt that, you know, this added value to, uh, what you want to achieve, uh, please, please, uh, you know, uh, give us feedback on LinkedIn. This would really help us in continuing, uh, uh, to give such sessions on a regular basis. Uh, we will be coming up with such sessions, uh, like such free sessions as well on a regular basis. And these feedbacks would really help us. I posted the link on the YouTube chat. Please, please give us feedbacks. Uh, whenever possible uh, and uh, you know I'll be posting it on the WhatsApp group as well and, and posting about the coupon code and the uh, course link as well on the WhatsApp group. Uh, this was uh, it from my side now going on to the next part which is certificates like uh, you know many of you are expecting almost all of you are expecting certificates for this course and uh, for this particular webinar and as we promised we'll be doing that. So I'll be share uh, uh, this particular uh, LinkedIn post, which I shared, just give us feedback and message are done on Shuvan's number. Uh, like we will be just posting the details on the WhatsApp group. Don't worry about it. The certificate details would be posted on the WhatsApp group. And, you know, we'll be sharing the form. You can fill it and you'll get your certificate. So that's it from our side. Uh, thank you guys for attending the session. Please, please give us feedbacks. If you like the session, uh, you know, it would really help us. Uh, and, you know, do register for the course if you feel that, you know, it would add value to you. Uh, we would try our best to get, uh, try and land you a job in, the part in this particular industry. So I see a lot of thank yous. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, guys, uh, you know, thank you so much. Uh, we really hope that you enjoyed the session. Again, please give us feedbacks. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you, Venus, so much for taking this particular free webinar for the students. Uh, I'm sure, you know, like uh, going back, uh, going by the uh, YouTube comments, it seems like a very, very good webinar. <laughs>
Thank you, Aditya and Madabot Sports for having me. I mean, like I said, it's a pleasure. And uh, I think I would really like to thank all the audience who watched it live and as well as for your questions. And I think most of the questions are very, very relevant and extremely, uh, you know, important questions. If I was, if I were you, I would be asking, asking the same questions as well. So thanks guys for watching and thanks for getting in touch. I see a lot of requests coming on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. And so, yeah, we'll be in touch. Uh, if you enroll for the course, I can promise you that, you know, I'll try my best to help you guys uh, understand, uh, you know, the intricacies of performance analysis in detail. And like Aditya mentioned, there'll be more um, interactivity and assignment-based approach instead of me talking in a monologue. So I don't like doing that, honestly. So I love to keep it more conversational as well as more um, practical, if I could say so, you know. So even, I mean, uh, unfortunately, we're living in this COVID time, then we can't do it in person. But then, you know, I'll just give you an example when we used to do it in symbiosis, you know, people used to kind of enjoy doing this course because, you know, I used to take them to play cricket outside by wearing those uh, catapult devices because Simbi had a tie-up with catapult. So, you know, so that was the level of uh, interactivity and assignment-based thing, practical approach that we used to do uh, together. So, yeah, looking forward to getting more elder ornaments. Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, and, you know, like I forgot to mention, uh, Venu, uh, uh, Venu is a faculty with Symbiosis as well. So, Venu, I think you got uh, muted, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I'm in. Can you hear no, me? No, no, you are there. Uh, yeah, so okay. to mention, you know, Venu is a faculty with Symbiosis as well. Uh, you know, he teaches this particular course in uh, Symbiosis School of Sports Sciences. So, uh, yes, uh, I see a lot of thank yous, Venu, for you. Like, people have loved the webinar. And regarding the course and the feedback, you know, guys, uh, I'll be just sharing the link on the WhatsApp group right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes all right. all right thank you aditya thank, thank you guys and uh, you all right good night take care bye bye bye, bye.